Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Coffee with the Critters, where we are joining you live here from Northwest Ohio in the United States in Sylvania at the Animal Behavior Center. Um, I'm in a different room today. It will be a little quieter for you. Oh, guess what? I just went live. Um, be a little quieter for you, hopefully. We have, uh, this morning we'll be joined by Levi, our deaf bulldog, and Quincy, who is behind me. And then there's Willie, education turkey vulture. You can see her wings spread out right there in the center. Good morning, everybody. So for those of you that are new, uh, my name is Laura Joseph, owner of the Animal Behavior Center. We're an international educational center teaching people all over the world um, how to empower the lives of the animals in their care and the people that care for them. We do that through our live streaming services and you can find out more about what we do um, in the live streaming programs we have um, on our website, theanimalbehaviorcenter.com. Um, there's something else I was gonna tell you about the website. Hmm, I don't remember. Anyways, so good morning everybody. Hey, it's gonna be a little more quieter until I get the drill going. Um, so we're sitting in the training room, um, which is 1,000 square feet of um, additional space we have here at the center where we focus on training in here and primarily enrichment. It is all around us. So for those of you that have not been here for a workshop and have not seen this room, this is what it looks like. We have wall full of enrichment, bins down there can't turn this around the other way but we have this whole wall is full of bins and enrichment parts there we've got our drill press behind us um, more parts over here and what we focus on is um, making enrichment for all the animals in our care whether they're resident animals or animals that are just here temporarily for training yay hello so um, I see Amanda on here, Sarah, Jan, Jennifer, Quentin, yay. Um, Barbara, Adrienne, Julie, Kim, Sylvia, good morning, everybody. So um, I'm going to show you some enrichment this morning. And um, I have it set up on this table back here. And I have some for different species. And if I'm talking about one species of animal, we were just talking about this in one of our online live streaming uh, programs this week. If we're talking about enrichment for one animal, think about how this can apply to the animal in your care. Because even though I'm providing it for a bird or a dog, you can figure out how this can be implemented into um, enrichment for a pig, a bear, which we were working on this week as well. Um, in an array of different types of food. Most of the enrichment that we do here comes in two formats. And um, that is positive reinforcement training. That is why I do what I do, because I like to empower animals. And I have found that their preferred form of enrichment is positive reinforcement training, if we're actually incorporating it correctly. Um, that's what led me down the path of behavior modification and training. Um, we can't be with the animals all the time. So we try to prevent overbonding, um, anything labeled as separation anxiety, and we do that through other forms of enrichment outside of our training, and that is primarily foraging. So most of our toys that we, our enrichment items that we come up with here um, are foraging items. Getting the animal searching for their food, working for their food. And a couple of tips, because um, we had an organization in here this last week that was wanting to learn how to know and do better through providing enrichment to um, their educational animals. Um, when we usually start with foraging toys. I will start with um, the animal's preferred treats, okay? And then I shape those levels of complexity of searching for that food in that toy. Then we increase the complexity 
Um, a couple of things. Studies show if you're actually using positive reinforcement training, it is the preferred form, the animal's preferred form of enrichment, but we can't be training all the time. Um, other studies also show that animals living in captive environments, four walls, a ceiling and a floor is a captive environment. And animals living in captive environments lack problem solving abilities. Um, meaning we're not providing them with um, enrichment that really increases complexities, um, focuses on the mental and physical stimulation of the animal. Otherwise saying a lot of the things that we're providing them are too easy. And I'm here to agree. Yes, that is true. Um, studies also show with predictability leads boredom. So... Yes, I do have links for these studies, Logan. They're sitting upstairs in my office in a stack of research papers about this tall. Um, but I'm here to tell you that um, a lot of these studies we see firsthand. Um, and if you're actually implementing the same form, you know it's true. So with predictability comes boredom. I have an article out there called predictability has its place and it does when I'm working with an animal with extreme fear in the beginning I will be so predictable to that animal I want my approaches to be the same predictable if the animal is um, less stress more calm on a routine I will put them on a routine um, but only for a period of time and at that same time I'm starting to shape changes in the environment a change can come in the form of the environment of beginning to vary that routine from every day at 10 o'clock to maybe tomorrow it's going to happen at 10 10 the next day it's going to happen at 9 50 the next day it's going to happen at 10 20 that's how I start adding in um, variety keep your animals used to change Another key tip is don't punish curiosity. Um, I have an article or a paper out there as well called Don't Punish, Careful Not to Punish Curiosity. Um, if you have an animal's curiosity, you have a lot of room. When I see a curious animal, I was like, we are going to rock and roll. Um, and I am not on, um, I am not on, I'm not hardwired today because I don't have, I'm on my Wi-Fi in this room because somehow my hardwiring got disrupted. So let's go ahead. I'm just scrolling through here real quick to see if anybody has any questions. Um, hey, Jenny, good to see you on here. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. So behavior, um, I will incorporate foraging primarily into every behavior modification plan I have. Behavior modification plan meaning changing behavior and it's um, I'm shaping using applied behavior analysis, positive reinforcement training to get the animal to do what I need it to do to get it to do things on more complex levels and I focus all of this on the welfare and the future of that animal. Um, so, what was I going to say? Oh, um, we incorporate this into all of our behavior modification plans. If you have been here, you have seen what a wide variety of enrichment uh, we focus on. And that's why I train, is because it's um, a great positive reinforcement, a great form of enrichment. So I have over here um, some things for birds some things for the dogs, some things for pigs. Um, this week we were working on some bear and primate training. Uh, we we're working on, or not, bear and primate enrichment, enrichment for a bobcat. <clears throat> okay, so when I start, I will make it, I will start with the animal's favorite treats. And then over time, I slowly tar start taking different forms of food out of the food dish and start incorporating it into the toys. I want to make sure the animal can get it 
it is achievable. If it's not achievable and we take too big a steps in the shaping plan, making the enrichment toys too complex, we can actually pun positively punish the behavior of the animal um, foraging. That's why when we put, um, here we focus when we put toys in cages, I s highly suggest you go in and watch that animal and make sure that the food, they are getting the food. We want to set them up for success, make it very easy in the beginning. Then slowly over time, as I see they are successfully foraging, I will start removing food from the food bowl and it starts going into um, the toys until it's all of their food. And then contra free loading comes into play where you start seeing the animal, even if the exact identical free food at less effort is in the bowl, but yet they're choosing to work for it. That's contra free loading. Okay, so let's get started on something. Let's start off with some of the most basic, okay? I'll bring that over here. Quincy and Levi out here with me. Okay, so I picked these up last night. Um, I picked these up last night. Let me take off the... So look at this. Yeah. So they're like, are we working for our food? Can we work for our food? I love it when animals um, <laughs> fight to be the first one out the door to get to the center in the morning. So this is what I did with my dogs at a very young age. Um, this is basic, very basic enrichment, but a great place to begin. Um, and do I have motivation? I do believe I do. Motivation? Mm -hmm. Okay. So... One of the things I started with, with my dogs, we can make this very simple. These dogs are going to be heavily enriched this morning. Okay. The more holes you put in here, the better in the beginning for shaping. Quincy's like, give it to me. Yeah. And so if you're going to use cardboard boxes as enrichment um, for the animal to forage for, um, make sure they're not ingesting the different substrates. Make sure they're only ingesting um, the food that's in here. Um, we do this for our uh, dogs. We'll do this for numerous animals. I don't really like using boxes like this for parrots uh, because... I see a lot of people say, my my parrots love boxes. And I was like, um, what does love mean? What does love look like? Um, and a lot of times they say, oh, I can't get my bird's attention once it has a box. Um, I would never provide something like this for my parrots because would they be very engaged in it and interactive? Oh, yeah. Um, and that's nesting behavior and reinforces a lot of times, reinforces nesting behavior you reinforce nesting behaviors, you're well on your way to reinforcing other behaviors labeled as aggressive, such as flying and attacking you. Okay, so let me show you. This is what I did with my dogs when they were about 12 weeks old. That's when I happened to get all three of them. But we can do something, we can do a couple different things. This is what I used to do. I don't do this anymore because they're pretty much beyond this. Well, pretty much, they are beyond this. So you peanut butter. And you can just smear it like that right on the inside. We can do this for the pig too. Um, Quincy's gonna be all over this. This is very basic. Um, you can even sprinkle kibble on here or you could just put kibble in the box morning Lily kibble can stick to this so I'm just dropping kibble in here see what the dogs do with it this lid is probably going to pop open pretty easily 
You want to make that more complex, hang it from a chain. Okay, see you, Quincy. Bye bye. And the lid just went. And all the kibble just came out here. Turn that upside down for her. You want to increase the level of complexity on that, um, and we're all about shaping and increasing levels of complexity. Um, we can hang that from a chain. Um, we have a lot of things here hanging from the ceiling. And we'll just take it, put it on a chain, and hang it above the animal's head. Um, Levi is going after the easier stuff. So as they work on that, I want to continue to work on some other things. So that's really super basic. That's an introduction, okay? <sighs> yeah, so... You watch Quincy. She will shred this to pieces, and you see her spit out the cardboard and start licking um, everything that's inside the box. So that's going to take her some time. Um, you could also put foraging toys inside of that, hang the box. Okay? Those are some. Levi's like, what about me? Okay, let's work on something for Levi. Let me see what I can come up with next. Now I'm going to do increasing levels of complexity. Kill it, Quincy. Let's do this one. <clears throat> I've heard some people say they don't provide um, enrichment to their animals because it's too messy. We want the animals destroying the toys, if they can. Um, there's a sign I've always wanted to hang outside of all the enclosures of the animals that I work with that says we're not messy, we're foraging. Okay, so this is a supplement that I give to all of our animals. <clears throat> it has tree bark in it, um, powdered tree bark. Anyways, we can do this um, with any plastic container. Um, what I do is let's just drill a hole in this. And based on Okay, you can what do we want to put in this? I'm going to give this to the dogs. I'm probably going to use this for the pig. Um, your level of complexity can come in several different ways here. I just had an idea. Hang on. Okay, your level of complexity can come in in several different ways with this. Where, okay, so this is likely to roll like this. Um, if it flips over on its end, um, it's going to be harder for the animal to move it. So your level of complexity could be in where you drill the hole, whether it's here, here. Your level of complexity could also be um, the more holes you drill, the easier it's going to be. The less holes you drill, the harder it's going to be. So the size of the hole. Um, I'm thinking... Thinking this might be too complex if I only drill one hole on this end, um, depending on the animal it's intended for. <laughs> so let me figure out what I'm going to put in here. You want to make the hole obviously bigger than. <laughs> bigger than the food I have to put in it. So when you're done with this, when you're done drilling, 
There's my hole. When you're done drilling, you want to make sure that plastic piece comes out. You're going to want to wipe the inside, get off that residue or wash it, and check it for if there's any sharp shards around the edge. Um, so something we could do here, let me grab some creeks. Okay. You could, your level of complexity in this could come in several different ways, okay? So I'm going to take treat pieces about that big, drop them in here. Levi's deaf. He can't hear. So he's not going to be able to tell when this is empty. So we could put the kibble just in here like this. And I do this for the birds as well. Hey, Rocky. I do this for the birds as well. Um, they can roll this around the bottom of the cage. You want to increase the complexity of this. Say it's coming out too easy. Take a paper towel. Okay. I just put it in here. Take a paper towel. Put it in here. It's objects that are going to cause it to not come out as fast. This is something we would do with the pig. And this is how we feed Milo, the pig, in the morning. We did this for um, Kronos, <clears throat> um, the crow, the African pied crow that was in here for a while for training. So if this is for Levi, he's going to give up on this really easy. And obviously, somebody is done with their box. Mm -hmm. Somebody's out there taking up the leftovers. So I'm going to keep Quincy occupied. Otherwise, she will steal this. You want to make this um, level of complexity even higher, okay? I would give it to the animal like this. This is for Levi, Quincy, not for you. See, Mano Hidalgo? Um, you can even hang this. Um, we have big water jugs here that we hang, and we were talking about we will start this huge water jugs. We will start by putting small holes at the bottom. You want the animal, and then we hang these. We had one hanging in here. Um, we actually put Willie's mice in it and let her roll it around. Um, we use it for Milo. Um, you hang it. You can increase levels of complexity by then moving the holes to the side at the bottom. Say this jug is really tall, okay? Move it to the side at the bottom, so and it's hanging from a chain, so then the animal has to come up and just, boom, hit it and keep that thing moving. And you can increase complexity by how high you start hanging it. Um, it's looking, okay. So I wanna give this to Levi. So that means I have to give you something to do if I don't want you coming after this. So let me get Quincy something else really quick. I see a foraging toy sitting on the ground right behind her. Um, you can even get really quick, simple, easy foraging toys. Um, this is one we got on the internet. It has a hole on the side. Um, this is really simple. Most toys out there are very simple. I find that we have to add in our own level of complexity. This is why we make a lot of our own toys. Okay, so I'm going to give Quincy something to do about a little peanut butter for you. I just smeared the peanut butter in there. Okay. Got a hole on the side. Mm -hmm. And these have ridges in the middle. So we have a bigger one. These are meant to be interlocked between each other. Go, 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 Buster, go. See you later. Levi's like, man, come on, what about me? You want this? So start off basic, simple, easy. Okay, so get it to roll. Bingo, he's getting it. Um, Snow, our deaf and blind dog. When I was traveling home from her with her the first night in the hotel, um, she can't see or hear. So I began with her by just sprinkling her kibble on the ground. 
A bored animal is one that's going to make its own enrichment in the form of digging, rooting, tearing your house apart, tearing your center apart. Um, then comes into excessive grooming, or could, excessive grooming, um, abnormal repetitive behaviors. So that's pretty simple. He's getting that all pretty easy. Quincy's cheap. And, um, yeah, yeah, okay, I knew that was going to happen. So there goes Quincy. Her peanut butter needs to be frozen. What is the blue one called? I don't know. Um, it's by Westpaw. And um, it is by Westpaw, and you can find it online. Okay, so, hey, Samantha. Hey, Daphne. Um, Daphne says bored animals see it all the time. I do, too. I do, too. Um, I believe somebody on here asked for the studies. It was by Minch and Meehan. We just talked about this, and I showed the study in my presentation. Minch and Meehan out of UC Davis is the one, are the ones that said um, animals in captive, captive environments lack problem-solving opportunities. Is that right, Samantha? <laughs> um, okay, thanks, Shelly. All right, so let's move on because we got a lot more foraging toys to go through. But do you see how we can make this so simple? I'm sitting here. Our awesome volunteers. I've got these sitting right beside us, um, which is all. This is the table which they sit at um, with all these treats. Can you see all of those? Timothy Hay, popcorn, Cheerios, dog treats, almonds, pretzels, okay? It, the animal is always the one that identifies the reinforcer. So I'm sitting here. Here's a couple of things you could mock up. These are just apple sauce containers that we save after our um, medication training via the syringe. You could whatever animal, okay? You could flip these over, drill a hole here, drill a hole here, tie them together with poly rope. Put a hole on the edge if you wanted. I'm just thinking. Increase levels of complexity by opening the toy, scrumpling, putting a couple pieces of paper in it or paper towel so the toys treats don't fall out as easy. Hang it on a chain. I can show. I can blow your mind with some of the things. So these are all very basic um, introductory toys. Um, those are sitting right here, so the volunteers must be using them. Um, we're currently making foraging toys for two lemurs, dill and pickles. Okay, um, let me take a look. And you know something else I'd like to do? Contact animal toy manufacturers, stores, whatever, and bring their toys on Coffee with the Critters and put them to work and give reviews. Mm -hmm. So if you want to submit your toy, please do so. If you want me to give you the honest to God's truth, just be aware that that's what I'm going to do. Um, but I will also show ways to increase complexity, how to begin foraging. Um, yeah, you can make things so simple last so long and increase complexity in your approach. Okay, so Levi's like, she took it again. <laughs> okay, let's get some more. Um, okay, so I'm trying to go up in levels of complexity and really. Okay, here's another very basic one. I did this yesterday. We bought these at the pet store. I have no idea what they're called. They're in your um, your pet stores, and there's usually a hard treat that goes inside of here. This one has been used. We have a um, enrichment workshop that we gave here last year, where we made all of our own enrichment. People flew in for it was a big hit, and I should probably have another one. So. Let's schedule one for, let's see, April 2020, where we fill this room with people, and I put you to work. Um, I have you make your own toys. I walk around, show you how to increase levels of complexity. 
I supply the substrates and um, then I show you how I would implement it and um, increase levels of complexity throughout the weekend. Okay, so there's like some kind of hard um, something, I think, that goes in here, like some kind of hard dog biscuit. We use these for the pig and we need to be using these for the lemurs too. And we did provide some enrichment for the lemurs, just making sure that they weren't ingesting it. So this has a lip. We do this for the lemurs. We can use um, banana baby food and they like their Cheerios. So what's really cool about using peanut butter Wow. We've got like 45 mile an hour winds here today, um, which is probably messing with my internet connection. And um, I love storms. That's something that makes me nervous is we have a um, specialized plastic, double layered plastic roof for the greenhouse. So the sun can penetrate and the animals can get in here. High winds blow trees, tree branches and plastic roofs. Not a good mix. We can blow our roof off. Okay, so I'm just lining the inside of this with peanut butter. Should have grabbed another jar of peanut butter. And somebody's going to come over here and steal this. He's like, I'm done. See, this is basic levels of complexity. Quincy is done. So I'm just taking some kibble, smashing it in with peanut butter. Okay, so now I can turn this over. You can think about how you can use this with any animal. I would probably not give this to a bird. I would not give this to a bird. Um, we do give plastic bits and pieces to our birds. Um, they're usually harder. We don't give vinyl. And with any form of enrichment, I will hand it because no rich enrichment is 100% safe. I will hand it to the animal. Watch how they're, and I'll stand right next to the enclosure. Or I'll get right next to the dog's bed. Here, have some. And sit down there next to them. Watch how they're interacting with it and make sure they're not ingesting anything. That's it. Levi's like, golden. Here comes Quincy. She's going to steal this because. She's blowing through all of the basic forms of enrichment. They're not complex enough. I do not make a toy if it takes me just as long to make it as it does for the animal to destroy it. Hey, Samantha, I'd love to have you here in 2020. We've got, I've got a bunch of workshops for next year. So um, the enrichment workshop is a lot of fun. So is the zoo workshop in, in June. We've got two in June. We've got a big event here in May. We've got something planned here every month beginning in February. Um, okay, so take a look at that. See that? We give it to Levi. This is a little small, but they have set. Levi's like, please, somebody just feed him. Well, so that's going to roll around. Don't forget, I love um, enrichment on chains, even for the dogs. So if your animal is foraging for its food, it's not digging holes in the grass. It's not attacking other animals. Here comes the stealer. Um, so he's slowly getting out the kibble, but he's, okay, he just ate it. I was going to say, is he eating the kibble? Yes, he ate it. Um, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Adrian says different types should use as ground liver, chicken, and a few kibble. Um, for the dogs, we will use canned dog food, meat spread, boiled beef heart, um, chicken. We use a lot of hot dogs. Um, we do a lot of different things. Okay, let's move on. We got more. Okay, have some of that. Okay, we're trying to increase levels of complexity here in stages. I've got some cool ones. 
All right. Let me do one. This one I want to start with. This is probably easier. I love PVC. I would build a house out of PVC. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I make a lot of this, Bobby. I don't know what this is called. This is usually find these in your pet store next to like the Kongs. I don't know what it's called. And they come in different sizes. Um, we have another one here that's about this big. Um, it's just disappeared. I'm sure Rico ate it. <laughs> um, okay. Okay, Valerie Sloan says it's star mark for the orange toy. And what is going on behind me? So she's choosing, oh, she found another spot of peanut butter in that box, okay? Um, so, okay, let's start with something else, PVC. We just, I'm in the process, this is what I'm gonna be doing this afternoon, making primate enrichment out of PVC. Um, and I think I can probably do something similar for the bob cap. I'm, I'm starting to design some giraffe enrichment too, and some of the volunteers here, Erica Blagrave's been really helping me. Um, so we've got some enrichment for the lemurs. Okay, so this is different sizes, but this is something you can use, okay? Um, this is one inch PVC. You can use two, three, four inch, and the bigger the animal, not necessarily, but kind of, um, the bigger the animal, the bigger my PVC gets. I'm talking as in one inch, two inch, three inch, four inch versus length. Okay, so this is just a piece of one inch PVC. And I like the ends that come off because you can then, oh, what the heck is living in there? You can then throw this into the dishwasher, all right? So I've got my one-inch PVC end caps. We make play stands, gems, all kinds of things out of PVC. Um, end caps, all right? So then I'm going to think about how you're going to use this. In the beginning, what I'll do is I'll drill a small hole because I can always make it bigger. But if I drill a big hole, I'm kind of screwed. Um, and how many holes, okay? So let's start with one. I'm gonna show you how to use this for dogs, pigs, parrots, primates, bears. Okay, what size do I want? I'm gonna start small. PVC can be messy. Okay, and do I want this in the middle? Do I want it at the end? Let's just start. I'm going to start at the end. Very pretty, Rocky. Um, so all I've done is drilled a small hole in this, okay? When you're done with this PV, it's, see, it's going to be sharp. It's going to have sharp edges. I don't want to give it to the dogs like this because can you see those sharp edges are going to cut their tongue? Um, so our nifty volunteers here have come up with our own handmade sanding block. We sand this down. This is very basic, okay? This is going to be very boring to my animals if this is something I give them all the time and if I don't increase the complexity. So all of the toys I'm showing you today are basic introductory, introduction toys, introductory toys. So then the inside of this, this cap did come off at one time. Um, you're gonna wanna take your, I don't wanna ruin their sanding block. You're gonna take your sandpaper Sand out the inside, 
You're going to want to wash this out, okay, because there's going to be shards of sharp PVC in here that you don't want them to ingest. Um, and then, see, so like, here's a piece of the PVC I just pulled out of the inside. That is why I just wanted to show you an example. The shorter you get, the easier it's going to be, okay? This is one that we currently give. You can use this for bird. We use these for our birds. Um, this one's going to be for a dog. Um, for birds, there's so many levels of complexity you can do with this. Um, so say this is half-inch PVC pipe. You have... Saw me with my glasses on. Half-inch PVC pipe. You have a primate or a bird that can pick this up. These are more foot toys, okay? Um, the bigger we get, I don't necessarily, um, if we want them to be objects that they move around with their hands, um, roll around. This would be a, for a parrot, okay? Let's say I can see the hole. I'm showing you. So you get a parrot, half-inch PVC pipe, and... They see pine, start with a bigger hole, make it so easy because you want them to pick this up and whoa, -ho, there went all my pine nuts. And you're going to see them doing all kinds of things, trying to really figure out how gravity works in their hands. And then they'll start going like this, popping it into their mouth. These are things I used to make for my parrots probably about 12 years ago. Introductory. You can increase levels in complexity in numerous ways with this, okay? By the size, the hole gets smaller, different things you can add to it. You can hang this. When you hang this in a cage, make sure, if it's for a bird, that it's down here, okay? Because the bird has to be able to pick it up and have the ability to move it versus hanging way up here and it can't, unless you want, unless they're that good of a forager. And, um, <clears throat> you can um, get them hanging on the side of the cage. Um, Samantha says a drill or Dremel will definitely work. Yeah, and let me tell you, um, I love this thing. We have our hand drills right here. Okay. If I were to start drilling this with my hand drill, um, small holes, beautiful. The larger holes you get like this, be careful. You're going to want vice grips um, or stick them in a vice because if you don't, when this thing starts spinning, if you lose control of this and this starts spinning, it can easily break a finger. That's why up there, I want it's, it's shoved in that vice and it is locked tight. It is not going anywhere. Believe me, I've had most of my injuries here at the Animal Behavior Center have come from the enrichment I provide. I have drilled through my finger. Um, I have almost broken fingers. I almost had um, my face um, disfigured from blocks of wood flying off and hitting me in the face. So yeah, be very careful. Okay, so let's give this to us. You don't want to stay over here so you can watch it? Just like. So Levi's still over there looking on his uh, orange toy. She's not, if she sits in bed with that thing, it's not going to be easy. She's going to learn. But she's going to try to chew on it. She might try to get that end cap off. And you know what? She might just do it. <laughs> hey, Mel. Um, okay. She goes to that bed, she's going to quickly learn. Levi's like, okay, next. She's going to quickly learn. She's going to roll that around. So 
That's becoming quite messy over there. That's Milo's bed. He's not going to appreciate all these dog smells and dog saliva. Okay, let's move on because um, I need to get to some more toys for this. Okay. Simple. But very cool. You can do a million and one things with this. Kai Tech needs to sponsor me. <laughs> okay. This is what I did with the lemurs the other day. Um, this acrylic ball screws together. We use this with the crow, with his mice. Um, this is nice because you can throw this in the dishwasher. We use this with the crow with um, Cheerios, okay? Because you can stick Cheerios, just kind of like I did with the bird food. You can stick Cheerios in here, wrap the Cheerios, sprinkle them throughout, and then put this back on here. And then what we used to see, we hung it on a chain, depending on where you put it, length of chain, where you have it, um, not next to a perch, next to a perch. We have the most awesome video of a crow foraging for his toy. Um, we showed it in our workshop. Sam, if you're in here, remember that toy? Um, where we hung it in the middle of the cage, not next to any perch. So you saw this crow flying from side to side and he was like calling, trying to figure out how to get this. And then what ended up happening is he was down on the ground and he kept jumping up and he had to eventually hang from this and try to figure out how to get his food out. It wasn't this though, it was something else. A way to protect because fingers, toes, talons can get caught in these. You want to be very careful. This is what we do. We would take something like half inch PVC pipe and we drop the chain into it. Um, you see this in our bird cages. If we need toys to be lowered and we don't want to use long pieces of chain, um, we hide the chain in the PVC. Okay, so that's one thing you could do. Another thing we did with the lemurs, this was pretty cool, is I lined this. You can line this with banana baby food, whatever. And then we just stuck a big plum in the middle. And we put this back on. And then we went and hung it right next to a, a place in their enclosure that they we knew they were likely to go to. So um, they didn't touch it. <laughs> and I was like, okay, why didn't they touch it? Do they like banana baby food? Yes. Do they like plums? Uh, I don't know. I've never tried that before. So start cutting up the plums, stick it in their food dish, see if they eat it. If they eat it, um, put the plum back in here. Maybe it was one whole plum, so maybe it was too big for them to figure out. Maybe you stick plum pieces that could easily fall out of here. Um, okay, so there's another one. There's two more I really want to get to when I've only got 10 minutes, 12 minutes. Okay, because these are pretty cool. One I designed muscle. Um, this could be used for rodents. You could, depending on how you did, you could probably use this with primates. I'm thinking things with hands with this one. Um, this was, these were tubes donated to us by an elephant sanctuary. Um, we just cut them down into small pieces. So I'm thinking, what size is this? Probably three inch. Uh, this is a core of something. If we took three inch PVC pipe, you could do the same thing which you're getting ready to see me do. We do this for our birds, birds. Um, it's cardboard, so they, not cardboard, it's a really thick, tough tube. Um, hang on, let me show you what we do. I change out my drill bit. Very pretty, Rocky. It's one of the saddest things to see is an animal doing nothing. If my animals are sleeping too much, preening too much, I probably have a very bored animal. 
Here's another thing. If you see an animal playing with its food, not foraging, but playing with its food, you probably have an under-enriched animal. So I'm going to drill two holes at the very end of this. One right there, one at the opposite end. If I were to use a hand drill, I probably should use a hand drill. Careful with your drill bits because when you get done doing drilling, that metal heats up really nice. So, uh, put a little scar on your skin. So, I'm going to use a hand drill for this instead because I think it's going to be more accurate. For the sake of time, so I want these directly across from one another. I may have the wrong size drill bit, but I want to show you. Okay, so I've got this tube hole here, opposite hole down here. Okay, hole here, opposite hole over here. Then I take paper straws, because they're eco-friendly. Oops, I already see where I made a mistake. Obviously, I haven't been spending a lot of time in the enrichment room lately. Okay. Okay, you want these to be a little tighter than this, so they can't just slip right out like that. But what you're doing is the animal can see what's in here, all right? So that's how thick this is. Then we stuff this with things, crinkle paper, paper towels, things in paper cones and pine cup, paper pine nuts and paper cups, so they can see it, but they can't quite get to it. And increase complexity by putting these straws further back so the animal has to chew through all of this. This is pretty, this is basic, simple, easy at the edge. Um, if you put these holes back here, the animal can't really get to it. Um, but if you want it simple in the beginning so they can get to this and start pulling it out. And then we'll put like um, cardboard, small one inch by one inch cardboard boxes in here that are conditioned reinforcers. They know when they see those boxes, hey, my popcorn's in there or whatever. Okay, and then we do the exact same thing with this at these ends. Okay, and then like you could, this could be foraging toys for primates, bears. You could make these out of PVC. Um, yeah, so I used to have my own toy company. That's how I uh, put myself back to school taking master level classes in applied behavior analysis. Several years ago, I had my own toy company, which was originally called Picky Parrot Toy, but then I saw somebody else was using that, so after I had already started it, so I switched it and just called it Bird Toys by Laura Joseph. How many Laura Josephs out there are making bird toys? All right, so anyways, there's that. Okay, I want to move on. Oh, another thing that's really cool, we even used this with the lemurs the other day, and then we put nuts in here, we did, volunteers did. Put nuts in here, and guess what I saw? Um, lemurs going after these. You use these to lure them into what's in here. Okay, you guys liking some of this? All right, next, I've got five of these. Okay, I got a couple of toys over here, I need to pick one. So 
some of these are toys we put together before. Some of these are I'll just look around, see what I have available, and start putting things together. And you know how you make them better? You just start doing it, figuring it out. Okay, so I haven't done this one before at this level. Um, whew, getting winded. Haven't done this before at this level, but um, I want to show you. Okay, so you guys have seen me use this toy before, right? This toy is great. You can stick treats in these little holes. Okay, I need to, hey, Willie, I need, you can put treats in here. You can smear stuff in here so as a lure, and then they can keep on licking or biting or whatever. You can put stuff in here, there. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, what's up, Levi? She stole everything, didn't she? Still working on that PVC pipe. Okay, so we take O-rings. And I usually open them with pliers, just enough. Slip this on here. So then I like these, and I use this for the dogs, too. I use this for the birds, I use this for the dogs. I have no idea what these are called. See? Spinners. That's what they're called. Spinners. Very pretty, Rocky. Am I doing this correctly? So I'm attaching a spinner. Spinners add complexity because the toy will move, but spinners make sure it doesn't necessarily come back. I like bells on my toys. They have bells made of different substrates. And I have bells made of different substrates, so if I'm not watching an animal, I can hear which animal is foraging. Okay, so I've attached that with my bell. It's gonna ring when this animal's foraging with this toy. Okay, this is gonna spin, spin, hopefully. So I'm gonna drop this into here. Whoops, <laughs> my spinners. <laughs> well, we'll see. It might work. Okay, um, I'm going to use this for the pig. Bigger versions for different animals. Use this for the pig. Use this for Levi. And we can take this, smear some of this stuff on there, get it in those holes. You want to make this more complex, freeze it. Let's try it out. Hang on. Let me get a hook. Not going to work. Uh, okay. I can zip tie this to something. So it's hanging. See how it, the more he interacts with it, the more it starts bouncing back and forth. Level of complexity, depending on how you hang this, could be more complex. Um, you can increase complexity by putting it up higher. So he can't put this on the ground and um, hold on to it with his paws, which he would be able to get all that peanut butter out of there a lot quicker. This is why I like the chain. You can increase this complexity as well. We use this a lot for snow or deaf and blind dog. She smells it. 
Now she's got to find it. So, like I said, what I'm showing you today, these are all very basic, very introductory. We need, this is the great way. They can see the peanut butter. They can smell the peanut butter. See how that's, I'm not moving the chain. They can see the peanut butter. They can smell it. Now they have to obtain it. And this is, this is, like I said, introductory. This is going to get boring pretty quick. So you want to make sure you continue to increase complexities. Um, yeah, I didn't use any glue with PVC. You guys, I'm going to tell you, no toy is 100% safe. Um, but I have seen people, I mean, obviously, do your research. Watch the individual animal. Make sure they're not ingesting it. Okay. Um, and then you got a lot, of, but I didn't spend a lot of time putting it, um, this peanut butter in there. If I wanted to take the time, I would have really shoved it in those holes. They may abandon the toy, but then come back to it. Okay. All right. So, um, whew, okay. Real quick, some things I didn't say. Take a look at um, our new website theanimalbehaviorcenter.com. Um, it we were we are going to start putting up our list of under events. You'll see our workshops for 2020 beginning in February. Um, we don't even have our zoo workshops up there yet, so just give us time because we're still working through some kinks in our, our brand new website. Um, if you're interested in learning more from what you've seen today, we have our online learning programs where we talk about animal behavior training enrichment. Our level one program is for uh, companion animals. Our level two is pe for people who are professional trainers thinking about getting into the field. Um, we have live, we have a lot more going on. People um, in wildlife, uh, rehab, zoo, what have you. Um, we have a live stream in level two training to, instead of say accept aversives, we're having a group discussion because we just had a podcast on this. Probably should have been how to prevent turning things into aversives or how to, what we're talking about is introducing aversive tastes. Um, it all depends on how you shape it. So we also have species specific projects. Um, our parrot project is skyrocketing, taking off. We have a couple things. Oh, we've got a doctor. We're um, getting ready to come in to talk about some different things. We have some things lined up for the holidays that they're going to love. Um, we have our Q&A in the Parrot Project, I believe, on Tuesday night. Join us at C4AW, Collaboration for Avian Wellness. Myself and several other people are going to be there um, the second weekend or the 15th and 16th or 14th and 15th in November. You can find out more about that at c4aw.org. Here are our two zoo workshops planned for June. We are going to open them up for registration through our level one and level two membership programs first. Then we'll open it up to our project members. Then we're going to open it up to the public. They will sell out fast. This last one sold out, I think it was in six days. Um, don't forget about our animal behavior center referral program, which for every five people that are referred to us and signed up to our online programs through your referral, you earn a one hour free consultation with me. So there you go. All right, guys. Um, happy Sunday. And I will see you guys next week. I've got some, um, you guys are going to want to pay attention to the upcoming interviews I have happening. I have some pretty cool people I think you're going to enjoy. All right. Take care. If you guys need to get a hold of me, you can always reach me on my at my email, Laura at the Animal Behavior Center dot com. All right. Take care. Have a great weekend. See you guys. Thank you. Bye. Have a great weekend. Leave